Good afternoon and welcome to the next installment of the Oxford Downtown Diaries. Yes, we are the dynamic (laughs) duo, Kimberly Smith, Kelly Westbrook, and of course I'm very excited about our guest today. I am so surprised with this. Yes, I know. It's it's a shocker (laughs) every week, but we have Jack Curtis on, our township supervisor today in a very important year, an important election year. That's right. It's a big year for you, Jack. Yes, it is. We have uh, one opening on the uh, township board for okay. a trustee, and our three positions are voting for, but okay. we're running unopposed. So we uh, look forward to having some new blood in the uh, trustee room. Not that the old ones didn't do a good job, but it's always, I welcome new new sure. blood. Oh, sure. yeah, for sure. I think we feel about the same way at the DDA. We always like the newbies to come in. Um, a fresh set of eyes. Yeah. For sure. And today's special because we are finally able to go live on Facebook. Yes. And so we're excited. Thanks, Jack, for being kind of our guinea pig on this yeah. one. Um, but if the audience has any questions, they can actually just type underneath. I'm keeping an eye on Facebook now. So if they have any questions for our township supervisor, they're welcome to ask. It's going to be great. Be nice, though, right? Of course. Of course. Yes, we'll okay. only, we're only going to uh, respond to respectful, professional questions. I love this. So, okay. Yes. Th- that's a good avenue to go. You know, our yeah. Facebook page is the same way. We, we only do positive, uh, informational things that encourage yeah. the community. And, and you're, you ladies do the same. Oh, we try. We try. For sure. So <laughs> I know Jack from the past you do. since we were neighbors when I was a kid. But yes. Jack, why don't you give our audience just a little bit about you and your background? Oh, my background. Um, I moved to Oxford in uh, this uh, October of 1972, prior to your parents probably being born. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I moved out here uh, from Warren. Uh, Go Warren. I, yeah, oh, Cosno <laughs> High School. I forgot you guys have that in we common. Do. Same with Chief Majestic. He oh, also, really? Yes. Oh, no he kidding. graduated from Warren Cosno. That's awesome. But I moved out here and worked at General Motors uh, in Pontiac at the Pontiac plants. And it would I would leave my house in the morning. It'd take me 20 minutes to get all the way to South Boulevard and Updrive. One traffic light. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So times have changed a bunch. Oh, yeah. After 38 years at GM, I retired. But along the way, after the kids graduated from high school, I started on the planning commission, and then I was elected to township board. And when Bill Dunn retired, I threw my name in the hat for uh, township supervisor. Great. And how many um, terms? How many terms have you been in office? Um, In terms of how long I've been in office since two thousand and two. Oh wow! So the planning commission is an appointment, and I was on that until. 2000 and oh gosh 20 no 2008 I was elected as a trustee okay and then in 2020 I was elected to township supervisor okay awesome and you've had a lot going on since then oh a lot and (laughs) what do you think your favorite project that you've worked on as the supervisor has been thus far uh that's a tough question um you know in the beginning selling Oxford you know, not selling it out. That's the key point is we've identified many, many uh, jewels, what we call them in the township, and bringing some proper growth and development to the community is is always good for the downtown. It's good for our schools. It's good for our parks, and people love the attitude. So I think proper development has always been good. Um, and back in 2000, it was different than it is today. Now we're kind of slowing the brakes down and following all of the zoning and the master plan and stuff. But there's still a lot of room for growth, and people can get cantankerous about that. Yeah, for sure. And we see that, I think, at the DDA within the village, too. But, you know, I always say that growth is good and growth is positive as long as it's done in the right way. And I think with your leadership, it will continue to go in the right direction. And that's what people really have to remember. And it is balancing that out. Um, people do get upset because they've moved out here and they don't want anybody else to move out here. <laughs> it's their special place. Yeah. yeah. And I was telling Kimberly a story a little earlier about water skiing on Oxford Lake. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That was 1972 before it was purchased and turned over into a private development. So 
you know, it's, it's grown, it's matured. We're bringing better services. Our schools have grown, the fire department's grown, our sheriff's taking off and, and are growing in the community. Look at our park since 2000. I mean, back when I came here, we had a small park. Now we have over 500 acres of parkland in Oxford Township. And those aren't including the ones in the village and some of the private parks within development. So there's a lot of open space and a lot of park development, which we're watching very closely. Yeah. Speaking of parks, do you have an event happening at your park this weekend? Opening weekend. Yeah. It's like opening day for the <laughs> farmer's market. Uh, I will have uh, four grandchildren there. Uh, two two children mm-hmm. and uh, their spouses, but yeah, it's opening day, and you know we look forward to it. Saturday is always something nice to do, especially this weather. You don't know if it's going to be yeah. sixty or eighty or raining, right. so it gives you an opportunity to go to a covered space and shop yeah. at the farmers market. Yeah, shopping yeah. local is so important. We talk about it so often in our office. I know. I think you guys will have some great traffic though, because. Yeah. For me, I coach soccer right now out there on Saturdays, and I know how many families are out there. So I think that's a nice way to always start the market is having those sporting events surrounding it. It really is because they bring in a food truck or two, and Mm -hmm. and it always has a a different snack, if you will, while you're (laughs) watching the kids play or enjoying the market. Yeah. Melissa was at the Chamber. I was at the Chamber uh, Coffee Connect this week. And so she was talking about the market, and she said it's completely full. It's outside of the pavilion. There's a couple of vendors outside of the pavilion, and two food trucks, I believe, and a petting zoo, a little petting farm or something. I oh, think that's fun. Yeah. yeah, so she's pretty pumped about it, which, you know, we love to support, you know, what you are doing in the township, and she's fantastic. So. Well, they aren't in the township, but my grandkids come out here, and they want to see Upland Hills Farm. Yeah. I don't know why they want to go to Cook's Dairy Farm, but they always have some cows and things over there they love. And, you know, it's always great for them to get out and see nature, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Ice cream. ice cream is, I mean, so I was good. To say, I mean, I yeah. Say Although we will, and this is, you know, just maybe a little soon, but we will have ice cream coming to downtown shortly. Yeah. You so know, that's very exciting. Somebody brought me a box of magnets. And I put them on my wall. (laughs) I do have the schedule for the summer on my wall. I don't have it memorized, but I know that Mrs. Curtis on my calendar has a few of them checked off and ready to go to. Exactly. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And not only a good summer. Exactly. Because action packed downtown, great events going on. We also have (coughs) Tough Mudder. Yeah, that's coming in June, correct? June, uh, (laughs) June 15th, 16th. Tough Mudder will be here. The week before that will be Seymour Lake Celebration. So there is a lot of stuff in (laughs) conjunction with the village, the township. It's all one place to have some good fun. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize, and I remember having this conversation when we first hired Kimberly in two years ago, is, you know, it's the township, and then within the township, and then there's the village, and then within the village, there's the DDA. And But we do all work together, and that's to move things forward. I think I hear it out of your mouth probably more often than not. We are all 43371. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, Jack, on a daily basis, because I think a lot of people, you know, they see the wonderful pictures and what you're doing online on Facebook, but on a daily basis, can you just run us through what does that look like for a township supervisor? Well, the first thing you have to remember is everybody wants to travel safely. Uh, Oxford Township has over 40 miles of gravel road. We get a large number of concerns. Uh, to address. We don't call them problems because you chose to move there and live Mm -hmm. on a gravel road, but we are here to help you. Oxford Township, unlike the village, we don't own the roads. The Road Commission of Oakland County owns the roads. So we work in conjunction with them as a supplier and a partner to make sure that all the needs are met. You know, this year we're, we're graveling probably close to five miles of gravel on these gravel roads for improvement. We grade them sometimes once, twice a week. Mm-hmm. We add chloride to them. So those concerns are are top right on the top of the list. Um, secondly, we have, just as the village does, our own water supply. So there's concerns about uh, our water bills. Why is our water bills here? Why is our debt reduction still going up? Is this thing in perpetuity? But th- 
the people just don't understand the government itself. We do provide service, and if you want to know about the service, don't call and complain, call and ask. It's transparent. Uh, we have a service. We offer services. We charge for those services. And if they're out of line, we can explain why, why you think they're out of line. We can justify it by showing you the cost, showing you the numbers. And, and it's a daily occurrence. First the roads, then the infrastructure. And then most generally it's people wanting to know about Oxford. Um, as you know, pretty much villages built out, if you will, as far as homes and businesses. There's a lot of room to come there. You fill them. I see the new restaurant coming. Yep. I'm waiting to see their hours because you know I'm a little early bird. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's on my way to work. So um, you know, we have many, many, many people coming to, they, they concern themselves with our demographics and then they start looking at the price of land, the price of improvement of the land and the taxes of the land. And they, they do their equation and come out and say, well, you know what, Nino, Papa Joe's, all those we don't fit their demographics. Now, on top of that, it's cheaper to develop out here, but you can't pay back the uh, the investment with the number of people in the community. So I get a lot of those questions daily. And so roads, infrastructure, and then development wanting to come here as in businesses. And, you know, all along for the past 20 some years, our economic development has always looked at businesses in the village and said, we don't want to put the farm market out of business. Yet the farm market kind of had its issues and it's been taken over. And I don't know how they're doing now, but in the interim, Tractor Supply came. We didn't bring Tractor Supply here to put a village business out of operation. That's not what we do. The business comes to us and says, we want to come here. Well, you know what, we already have somebody here. Well, we're going to offer something different. It's always talked about and discussed. It's, it's, it's not that we're trying to put somebody out of business, mm -hmm. but the services and the, the goods are oftentimes needed. So what do you, I know you're in a lot of meetings and you have a lot of uh, network, not networking, I don't know if that's the right term, but like relationship development with within the larger political landscape. Could, so you, could you talk about, having a hard day today ah. <clears throat> could you talk a little bit about what that part of your job looks like because you're talking about like what you do while you're in the office right yes but I'm, I'm not in the office all the time right. I'm in the office a lot yeah but um, I normally get in there about 6 30 6 15 in the morning today I was late 6 45 <laughs> but um, I've already met with uh, the Orion Township Supervisor I've already met with and talked to the Brandon Township Supervisor. I made two calls to Lisa McLean's office this morning talking about grants for firefighters and safer communities. I built relationship with Congresswomen, the, the Lisa, uh, Lisa Slotkin and now Lisa McLean. You know, I'm so bipartisan. I just try to do things and network with these uh, political parties to get something for Oxford. I don't care if you're blue, red, green or yellow, if it's good for Oxford, I go after it. And it's sincere because we have needs and I try to get them fulfilled. Agreed. Is one of the needs still the hospital? Yes, it is. Okay. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, where it is in the process? I mean, I'm interested for <laughs> me, so I just wanted to know. Yeah. You know, I've met probably 30 times up in Lansing for the uh, Certificate of Need with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. We've taken powerhouse people up there like Sheriff Bouchard, uh, Senator Baer. I mean, we've taken a lot of people up there and showed them the island of non-hospital that we're in. 30 minutes to an acute care hospital. Well, of those times, it's so hard to move some of those government entities that we did cheer on McLaren to invest probably close to $60 million in building a new uh, emergency outpatient surgery center, and they're going to tear down the old one. So, And it really does look great so far. You know, I, it, it's going to be, and they're going to fully staff it 24 hours a day. They'll triage whether the ambulance has to take you somewhere else, or they can perform life-saving and or stabilization practices 
so that the person can go the 30-minute ride. So that, that's a great plus. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to meet with uh, Corwell Beaumont again. Uh, they have changed since the Beaumont plan a few years ago. It's going on seven years now. Um, we have had five different real estate people who work for Beaumont, and they have recently merged with Spectrum, and it's now called Corwell. Well, now I'm meeting the new real estate development person today from Corwell and discuss the plans of their 24 acres. So we're, we're always in conversation. Last week I talked with Nicole from, I was on vacation by the way, and talked to Nicole from uh, Ascension. Not Ascension, Henry Ford. Henry Ford just has acquired Ascension properties. They're going to be uh, merging in June and they also own 15 acres in Oxford. So we're rolling a dice here. We're waiting on them. Uh, we're making everything possible we can. Um, height requirements, sign ordinances, wayfinding. Uh, we're working on it. We're ready for them to come. Yeah. Do you think that our town, with all of the growth, can support all three of those? I think that the town can. The town in the surrounding area. You know, I have a pie chart or a circle chart. Chris. Barnett and I took it up there and showed them that within five mile radius of Oxford, you have over 180,000 people. And that's hard to imagine, but you kick in Orion at over 30, 40,000, Oxford at 22,000, Brandon at 15,000, Addison at 7,000, Oakland Township. They want to come this way. Seven miles this way versus seven miles to Rochester. If there was a fine facility here or many, they would be competitive and, and probably all fit. It's that the traffic and the travel time is uh, definitely a big, big factor in all of this. We're going to do a test again. Can you talk? I can talk. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. okay. I'm back online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real life technical difficulties. I know. So what do you like best about Oxford? What has kept you here all of these years? You know, it's, that's a lot of years. I, uh, ooh, let's see. It'll be 52 years this year. That's that's a long time. Um, I, I, liked, I liked it as a rural community. I used to go out and chase cows that were running around on cow farms on, I can say, railroad in Delano. I oh watched God. horses running around, chasing them with the sheriff. Uh, but I've watched it grow and develop to meet the needs of the people. It meets all my needs. I mean, parks, downtown, great uh, services from both police, uh, the school. You know, I've had four kids graduate from Oxford High School, one with Kelly. Mm -hmm. 2000, I won't say it. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Hey. <laughs> Stopped right there. But, uh, no, it's um, it's been a great community through the growing process and growing up our children and um, property values have been increasing and uh, it's a great place to live. I mean, look at you two. We come down and see in the village, we laugh, our grandkids are there, your yeah. children are there yeah. and, and it's just a fun time. It is, it a, is a great time. place yeah. to raise a family. I mean, Kimberly and I are definitely in the thick of that right now, <laughs> raising two little kids, oh, but boy. it definitely is such a nice place and a friendly place. And you're making it more friendly every day. The lighting, the speakers. I even made mention about the halogram that's shining down oh, yeah. on the sidewalk. Yep. I hadn't noticed that in a while, but it was dark. And I looked over and went, what is that on the side? Oh, mm -hmm. that's the halogram. But, you know, it's it's inviting things like that. Centennial Park. When you hold an event on there, uh, the concert's in the park, the people are just all smiling and happy. And, you know, nobody's pushing and shoving. It's not like you're going to... Woodstock or right. something. That was a concert back in my day. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Thanks for we the clarification. Have, we might have heard of it. <laughs> yeah, may have heard about it, yes. So one thing I wanted to mention is because I know, you know, Kimberly and I feel this often, is that public service is really hard. And, you know, here you retired from a job and you decided to be a public servant and go back into it and be an elected official. And, but there's a lot of hardship that comes with that because unfortunately the public is not always aware of what we're doing or is friendly about what we're doing. And sometimes you do get a lot of pushback. So how do you 
stay so positive and manage that on a daily basis? Well, like in Oxford, the good far outweighs the bad. When I say bad, meaning controversial conversations you may have with somebody who's unhappy with a sewer bill or a road problem or something like that. There are far better people that treat you with respect and talk. You know, I sit on the career technical education at the Oxford High School. I go out and I try to deal with the youth that are not really college bound. I, even if they are, try to get them employment, show them different jobs that they could take and not have any college debt to pay back and um, get them into good paying jobs. So I try to encourage them all to get into public service. It's public service. It's, it's, okay, I, I'm not doing this for the money. I, None of us I, do. <laughs> no, no, we certainly don't. Um, and it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I got graduated four kids from this high school. I watch the graduates from our high school performing great things in downtown. And you know what? It just gives you a good feeling uh, to be in that part of the community. So that far outweighs the bad. And I think you said it earlier, which was really interesting, is, I think it's a lack of understanding of what happens day to day or the process or, you know, unfortunately we are not able and your group as well to just make decisions, snap, snap decisions at times. We have boards, we have people that planning, we have commissions, we or committees, commissions, all these different groups that we have to run information through and have people make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And so I don't know that people always understand that. That's why there's potential delays or why things don't always work out the way that the mass uh, community would like to see it. So it is about education and and making others aware of what we're doing, how we're doing it, which is, again, why why a little bit of why we're here and why we have guests like you to share that so that people can start to understand it maybe a little bit more. One of my pet peeves is government. (laughs) you know and it sounds so hypocritical but i really do i hate the processes in government i came from i started off on the assembly line Mm -hmm. and at 60 jobs an hour that's one minute a vehicle would pass you and you had to do something today it's like why do it today we can do it tomorrow Mm -hmm. you have zoning enabling acts that you have to follow the procedures with public notification three times And you have to do it two weeks before the event. So you're out three months before anything can get done. Mm -hmm. And then you have all the bureaucratical, I call them handcuffs. Uh, We have Eagle, Environmental Great Lakes Energy. And it's, you have to permit this stuff. And it took us six months to get a permit to do a bore under M24 for a sewer. Six months. I can relate that to a dollar figure. Because six months before that, we got a price, and six months after, we got a price. It went up $600,000 for delaying it. We have a project going on right now that has increased its cost by $400,000. That's 14 months late. And that's a sewer improvement so that we can do some of the things that must be done according to the Zoning Enabling Acts and all of the ordinances and all of our master plan requirements. So... It just takes so long to do anything. Yep, we feel that. We can relate. We can relate, Yeah, for sure. Yes. Well, Jack, thank you. We appreciate you. We love working with you. And I know that technically we're under the village and you're the township, but you say it best, so go ahead and say it. It's 48371. There you go. Thank you. I love it. Thanks, Jack. Oh, you're welcome. So you were out of town. I was out of town. Yeah. At our national conference in Alabama. (laughs) It was actually really, it was really great. So the conference was amazing. This is our national Main Street conference that um, we go to once a year. I was um, very blessed to speak this year and be able to represent Oxford at a national level. So we did a whole presentation on Washington Square and how that came to be and the improvement projects and how that was really a community that came together Um, to make that happen. So it was wonderful. It ended up being standing room only, which I was thankful because, of course, when you go to present, you're always like, oh, please, people come to my class. And I will tell you, I every year, I swear this happens, but I always get the class right after lunch. And I'm like, (laughs) get out of the food coma, you guys. But this class had a lot of energy and it was really great. 
Um, and it was just nice to be able to put a spotlight on Oxford and just let them know what we're doing and why we're doing it and what kind of community we have. That's awesome. And I know you talked this morning in the office about having some um, new ideas for things on how we do things, our processes and yes. improvements there. So more to come on that. Yes, Unless more to anything. come. Oh, no, you don't okay. even want to hear them because <laughs> it, they're going to be so much more work for us. And I know Excellent. we are drowning as is. We are. But just some of the innovations that come out of these communities that are roughly our size and the way that they utilize, you know, incubators to fill buildings in the downtown and, you know, just some simple things, too, that we can go into right away. We have our e-commerce site, OC Mm -hmm. Main Street, so people can shop online from our downtown businesses. And one of the communities that also utilizes that platform has QR codes in their window. So when those storefronts are closed and someone walks up, they can scan and shop. Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, simple things like that, that we're just learning these best practices Mm -hmm. and we can implement those right away. So it was kind of a give and take. I had things that I came back with that I'm like, okay, let's put these in place right now. And then things that are probably more like three years down the road. That's awesome. So more to come. And you held down the fort. I tried. (laughs) How was it? (laughs) It was busy. It's it's always eye-opening when you're away because then (laughs) I mean, obviously, you're busy. I know you're busy. You have a million meetings. You have a million emails. But it, to live that day in the life of is eye-opening. It's fun, right? It's so fun. I know. <laughs> so it was funny because we had a comment about um, communication the other day. And so I just did a little recon info and just to see how many emails, phone calls, Facebook messages. We have two cell phones. We have one office phone between the two of us in a week and we're getting back to roughly a thousand people. And that is just crazy to think that between I'm full-time, you're part-time, we're doing all of that while setting up the events, running the committees and answering to our board. So, um, no big deal. And grants. Yeah. Just put the grants on top. Yeah. And all of the other fun things like the podcast or other events that we get to go to. Which I think segue segues nicely. I literally cannot talk today. I do okay. not know what's happening. You've been running the office all week by yourself. <laughs> I need a vacation. Yes. Um, but we have some interns that I think will be joining Very us over excited. the next couple of weeks. So that's really exciting too. I feel like maybe we should have them on a podcast and introduce them to our yes, audience. Yes, of course. I think that would be great. They need to get approved by our board of directors yes. on Monday. So next week we will get the official approval and then we'll get them onboarded and we'll have them over the next couple of weeks. So going to be great. I hope good. they're ready for our chaos. I don't think they are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think we have the Main Street Awards Ceremony on June 6th. Yes. And that yep. first week of June kicks off our summer summer nights in Oxford. Yes. And are we ready? I don't even know. We have line yeah. dancing that week. It's going to be great. The second week we go car straight show. into car show concerts market in July. Yeah. Then Cornhole Series. Yeah. We've got Ladies Night, Wine. Ladies oh. in the 80s. Yep. So that's June 14th. Okay. Oh, we also have our um, spring planting yes. on the 23rd. So just a couple things. I'm tired all of a sudden. I know. Let's not talk about okay. it anymore. We have too many things. But anything else you want to share before we uh, adjourn for today? No, just great to have another awesome guest here and looking forward to next week's show. But um, it's been it's been good. It's been busy, but I'm proud of what we're accomplishing, and I hope that we're making a difference in the downtown. Yes. Did we get any questions? No. Okay, that's not. But well, people are watching. Hey, six of you. Hey, hi guys. Okay, well, thank you again, Jack. Hope you have a great weekend, and we will see you guys later. Thanks so much. Bye.